This is Will in 5 ola and today I'm going to be restoring a Heathkit power supply. If you have one of these, there's a good chance that you use it and it's in good shape and the capacitors are nice and supple. Um, if you have one that's been sitting on the shelf for a couple decades and you want to turn it on, be careful. The four can capacitors have a tendency to explode. That's because over time that electrolytic fluid uh, hardens up and you've got to reform it. If you have a variac, you can bring them up slowly and get them to work. But if you want a truly high performing power supply for your HW101 or your HW100 or your single bander, then it's a good idea to upgrade the power supply. And I'm going to show you how I do it. This is my PS23. It's in very good shape on the outside. You can see the styrofoam because I just got it in the mail today. I'm going to do some cosmetic work on it. But the main purpose of this video is to show how I install an upgrade kit. And I'm going to be using the upgrade kit by WK5R. You can Google that. Um, he sells them on his online shop. Comes as a kit or it comes assembled. I like to get it as a kit because I just like building things. It has instructions, not extremely lengthy or detailed. If you are using the WK5R kit, you can consider this a companion video for that. If you're using another upgrade kit, I think this video might uh, help you in that journey. Uh, but this is specifically geared for the WK5R upgrade kit. Okay, you're going to see this rig for the first time with me. And uh, that's about what I expect. There's the front view. All right. By the way, can I just say something? If you are shipping a rig to me for repair, or if you're selling something on eBay and you're packing it in styrofoam, please wrap it in plastic so your buyer isn't pulling out shredded styrofoam. So what we're gonna end up doing is removing just about everything. Gonna keep the transformer, Going to keep the 11 pin socket, going to keep the brake one. Oh, we're going to replace that with a fuse. Okay, first of all, I'm going to build the upgrade kit. Comes with everything you need. There's the PC board. The uh, These large capacitors are going to mount on this side. Everything else mounts on this side. You'll note that the board indicates the diodes D1, D2, D3, D4, etc., but it doesn't show polarity. So for that, you refer to the accompanying illustration. I've got my large capacitors in there. There's no silk screening on this side of the board. Uh, so just find your polarities on this side and match them up. And now we start getting into some of the subtle differences in assembly depending on what kind of power supply you have. This is a power supply with a bias adjustment control. If you have that model, then you're going to put these two 10K resistors, where do they go? At uh, point number two. They go right in there and they stand up and then you attach these to the uh, pins of the bias pot. You'll see that in the instructions. And that is the fully populated board. You'll note that I like to keep the resistors and diodes elevated just a bit. I think the thing runs cooler that way. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but I like it. Okay, now the deconstruction phase. I'm gonna start removing everything. We wanna get rid of the old, bring in the new and have something that's going to stand the decades. So the electrolytics come out, all the resistors come out. I'm gonna to toss all these. I'm probably gonna keep these, uh, these diodes because I do find that these come in handy sometimes. I'm gonna keep the terminal strips. The rest of it coming out. I'm gonna be sure to cut the leads as close as I can 
to the terminal strips or to the components because we don't want to run out of wire on these things. These transformers have only so much wire to play with. To get to this last screw down here, you got to remove the uh, breaker switch. Be sure to keep this little brown grounding wire. We're gonna need that. Oops. We're gonna need this later. access to the front we can give it a good cleaning and I am going to sand the outside of this uh, choke watch the difference you won't believe it okay got that out I'm gonna remove these from the terminal strip clean off that terminal strip and use it later not on this project but I'm sure I can find a use for it later. If your power supply has a, um, a ground mounted to the chassis here, gonna need to take it off. We can move this uh, down to this corner, but we're gonna need uh, this opened up to uh, put, install the PC board. This is some of the most hardened gunk I've ever encountered. I'm gonna use some desolvent. Let it sit for about an hour or two and come back and brush it some more. Oh man, 10 minutes later and look how that's coming right off. Not bad. I thought the transformer was pretty clean, but now that I look at it, I'm not so sure. I think I'm going to hit it with some Rust-Oleum Black. I used to get really wrapped up and taping everything off and so forth. And then I realized all I need is this file folder, cut a little notch for it, slip it in place, fold it over, and just be careful the direction that I'm aiming the paint. And uh, works out just right. While that paint's drying, let's take care of this rusty choke. And there's the result. Pretty impressive. Okay, I've got the choke mounted. Look how nice it is with that newly painted transformer. Sweet. Now, I'm using number six screws, five eighths of an inch long. I'm gonna put two sets of nuts in here and I'll show you why. We're gonna have these exposed contacts and remember I said you need to cut them as close to the board as possible. We just want that standoff to prevent anything from contacting the chassis. Okay, I've dressed all the wires. Now I'm going to remove the circuit breaker. So FYI, you don't have to replace this if it's working. Most people do only because they tend to weaken with age and pop indiscriminately uh, or pop at a lower value than three amps. I'm gonna replace it with a standard slow blow glass fuse. And to do that, I'm gonna have to do a little drilling. Forgot to mention, I'm gonna add standoff nuts down at the bottom as well as the top. Okay, now time to get the PC board in there and it's a little tricky. You wanna get all your wires out of the way. You wanna get it in there like this, get the, the two choke wires through the hole. At the same time, you want to clear this edge right here because it has to be upright for these guys to slip through. See that? The uh, screw holes don't quite match, or at least one of them doesn't quite match right here. 
Let me zoom in on that. That screw doesn't match the hole, so I'm gonna need to get the Dremel and open it up. I'm gonna make sure I haven't broken that ground connection right there. I don't think I have, but I'm going to uh, go ahead and add a tiny wire there just to be sure that this trace connects with this ground. So I sanded these two spots and then I added that little wire there. Just wanna make sure I didn't compromise the ground when I made that cut. Okay, let's try again. Get my wires out of the way. I'm gonna get these black and red choke wires through the hole. I'm gonna stand this up so it walks in. And voila, we're in. And that's what she's gonna look like when we're all done. And of course we need to add our fuse and let's do that now. Okay, my fuse holder is installed and I've got it wired in. Now I'm gonna start uh, attaching all my wires to the various pads on the PC board. It's clearly marked in the instructions. However, there are slight variations uh, depending on which model of power supply unit. Also, if you have the rig that has switchable voltage or a bias pot, you're gonna have slightly different uh, wiring. But that's all provided in the instructions. This little stub of a wire is a ground that's on the underside of the 11 pin socket, really hard to get to. What I'm gonna do is just hook everything up together. Uh, I'm gonna extend the little stub and have everything going to this one ground contact. And there it is with its heat shrink band-aid. So all my wires are dressed and now I'm gonna follow the instructions and solder them to their respective pads. The pads are clearly numbered, six, five, four, etc. Each pad has a little hole to hold the wire. You just wanna get it in there just enough to hold it in place, and then you can uh, solder it. Here's one of those wire variations I was talking about. The instructions call for attaching the red wire from pin four of the socket to solder pad seven. However, what's coming off pin four here is a blue wire, and that's how they did it on the PS23. They changed wire colors. Okay, these are my four ground wires. Got them soldered together. Now I'm gonna seal them up in a wire nut, just like so. The final step in the wire assembly is to attach three wires to pad nine. I don't do that. What I do instead, that, that pad nine is nothing more than a meeting place. Just as I did with these ground wires, I'm gonna just solder them all together and uh, connect them with a wire nut. Then I uh, just finished them off with some electrical tape. And that concludes the wiring. Okay, now before I put it all back together, I wanna see if it works. And to do that, I've created this little jumper. Now when I plug it in, it'll either work or it'll smoke or it'll explode. Let's see. It's always a bit of a nail biter. And by the way, I did check my work against the instructions. That's so important. It's so easy to get those pads confused. All right, here we go. I hear a hum. I don't see any smoke. Yeah, it's working. So let's test it. I'm gonna test my DC voltage, run the black lead to ground, positive lead to plus HV, 858, oh yeah. And now to the plus LV, that's the B plus voltage, 374. That's what we want. Great, so what about uh, AC voltage? Let's try it. Run the black to the 
filament common red to 12 volts and we should have about 14 yep 15 volts that's about right and then finally let's check the bias voltage and we're negative 139 that's good she works so on to the cosmetics this is a really fine example of a power supply especially after we cleaned it up but it does have some scuffs and scrapes and I don't mind using touch-up paint in remote areas like that. I won't use it like across the front if there's a big gash. I'll just leave the gash. I do keep some touch-up paint on hand. I actually sell these brush bottles on my website. They're about 10 bucks. Um, so for little touch-up work, I think paint is great. But I wouldn't do it on any large scratches or anything. That really is going to be a close match. I also sell these in uh, spray cans for larger jobs. You'll often find scratches along the grill of the cabinet top. Touch-up paint works really well here. Okay, time to seal it up. I put my sticker in there. Always nice to leave your name or a little note to the future. So that decades from now, people will wonder who did such a fine restoration job. By the way, I'm not going to paint over where the screws go in. I want some ground contact for the upper cabinet. And that's a wrap. Well, that's it. Now I'm going to just put it through some real life scenarios, make sure that it operates fine under load. But I think she's a winner. And uh, it's been a fun restoration. I'd say actual time for that restoration, if I wasn't explaining each step, maybe two hours. So anyway, it was fun. And I'm going to go do another one. Take care, everyone. 73.